Hey everybody, uh, James Tracy here, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Golf. We're here in the Minnetonka Tour Van. I'm here with my good friend and fellow colleague, Thomas Campbell, another one of our Master Fitters here at Second Swing. Uh, in addition to being a fitter, Thomas is a fantastic player here locally, and we're going to put the two, two new Titleist TS drivers, the TS2 and the TS3, up to test with our uh, local robot here, Thomas. So, uh, kind of excited to see how these two heads compare. I am too. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the TS2 and TS3. Um, I've heard good things about it. We've heard maybe more ball speed, so that's going to be an added bonus. Yeah, so goal, goals of this video is kind of hear from Thomas some of the things that he looks at when choosing driver technology, you know, how we incorporate both head models from a fitting standpoint, and give the viewers out there maybe some indicators of are you more of a TS2 or maybe more of a TS3 player, and how we use the fitting process to kind of zero in on the best head for your unique swing characteristics. So Thomas, if you're ready to rock and roll, let's hit some shots, all right? Sounds good, cool. Thomas, you play a uh, Titus Pro V1X, correct? Correct, yeah. So we're gonna use that in our testing just to get more accurate ball speed launch spin uh, results. And um, we've started Thomas off here with uh, one of the stock shafts in the TS line, which is the Evenflow White T1100 um, in a 65 gram, and that's a 6.5. Flex, that's pretty similar to the type of shaft that you play in your game, correct? Yep, pretty similar. Yeah, very, very close in weight. I play the BB um, 6X, so pretty, pretty close. Awesome. So, uh, what are some of the ball flight goals that you usually have when you're looking at a driver, Thomas? Things that you're looking for specifically? Straight. <laughs> <laughs> I like to drive as straight as straight as I can. Um, don't so when you say straight, you mean you don't like to see much movement right to left, or do you mean you just want your misses to find the short grass? Essentially misses to find the short grass. I don't mind it's got a little bit of curve to it, but I, at the end of the day, more fairways for me makes more, gives me a chance to make more birdies. So. Since we're gonna play pretty straight hole here on the TrackMan TPS software, how would you tend to flight a ball down a straight fairway like this? Are you playing a little draw or are you playing more of a fade? Typically, maybe try and play a very small draw. Okay. Um, sometimes it stays, stays to the right a little bit, so maybe a gentle push if anything, but um, I'm usually trying to hit it pretty straight overall though. Okay, yep. excellent. Well, let me get the track man queued up here for us and then uh, we'll capture some shots. You know, what we like to do in our product testing is we'll hit three shots with TS3, We'll jump over to the TS2, hit three shots, and then three more with each head. Kind of look at those top six shots and as a comparison. And then I think you said your gamer was right around nine and a half. Nine and a half. So we'll, yeah. we'll test both heads at nine and a half too. So we're really just looking to do an apples to apples test with both heads. Sounds good. Awesome. All right, perfect. All right, if you want to fire right at that white line on the right half of the screen here, Thomas, let's uh, let's punch in what we're cooking with here. So we're going to start with that TS2, or excuse me, TS3, right? Yeah. Yep, three. Have you played Titleist drivers in the past, Thomas? And if so, did you tend to hedge for more the D2 model or the D3 model in the past? Uh, D3 model a little in the past. Um, I had, I played around a little bit with the 917 when it first came out, um, and yeah, then I switched to a, a different a different model after that. Uh, so I have, I have played Titleist in the past. Going back a few years, I have played Titleist, but it's probably been a while since I've had Titleist in my bag consistently for okay. a while. Cool. So, you know, obviously we'll get some first impressions as far as the look and the feel, and then obviously we'll kind of crunch some data. So let's let's start by hitting three shots with that TS3. Yep. Three. Obviously, Tiger's drivers are pretty consistent you know, in their evolution as far as just the crown and the shape and the look. So I kind of already know what you're going to say. What, what do you think of the first impressions of the look and feel, I think? Yeah, this one kind of looks like the traditional kind of pear shaped look. The, this is the three, right? Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it looks, looks pretty similar. Um, I like this new black look versus the, we're going back to the black look, I should say, as opposed to the 917 that was a little, had a gray look. So, you yeah. know. But it looks pretty traditional that the uh, TS3 does. So. Yeah, that's some of the feedback I've gotten fittings to that black finish seems to hit home for more Titleist players. I guess we're working with the cup today. Hey, you know what? We work with what we got. <laughs> 
308 with a baby cut's not uh, something to cry about, though, so I'm not going to let you complain too much there, my friend. <laughs> Let's hit one more. That was a mess. It's good. I mean, as robotic as you are, it's good to have maybe a couple subtle mishits in there. That'll give us a good average. Uh, we are testing both of these um, in the standard A1 setting. Yep. Um, and then, you know, that TS3 does have that movable sure fit weight. We kept just it in the standard setting there. So, yep. um, you know, I think in the past too, some players that edge towards the D3 and that smaller look, um, it is less of a draw friendly head. Yep. So the fact that you're seeing a ball that's just falling a little bit to the right doesn't scare me too much. We'll see how the TS2 head changes maybe some of the early impressions of look. It does set up different. Uh, the crown is definitely stretched out a little bit more, I think, and uh, we'll see if the ball flight changes dramatically here. But again, same loft, nine and a half. Yeah, this same shaft. This head definitely looks a little more modern, that's for sure. It's very square. Like, you know, very, very square. It looks like, I kind of like the look of that. It might be easier to turn it over or at least Manipulate the, manipulate the club face a little easier, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, cool. That's a good observation. I think performance always trumps everything in the fitting environment, but you know, for better players, or even mid to high handicapper, you have to have confidence in what you look at. I mean, if you're constantly adjusting the club at a dress, or you feel like the club's going to create a miss hit that you don't want. I mean, that is not a good psych psychological advantage to have before you step up and hit one. So, you know, yeah. looks are always important. It def definitely looks easy to line it up. Okay. High tall. Directionally didn't hurt you too bad. No, it wasn't hit very well. It's all right. Very cool. Okay. That felt so solid. Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Every dimple was touched on that one, my friend. Nice shot. Just there's, me your, there's, your, there's your straight ball, yeah, it's a walk off <laughs> right there. Let's do one more, we'll kick out that uh, we'll kick out that second one as a little bit of an outlier, but yeah, Same number is fantastic. Obviously perfect flight. Yeah, take those last two. <laughs> Well, early uh, early front runner there for sure at TS2. <laughs> um, interesting how you know maybe it was an adjustment that you made. You know, as we jump back to that TS3 head, we'll see if the it might be changes. a little bit. Um, but definitely, um, that head was definitely wanting to fly a little straighter. Um, and even you said a dress, it looked like it might be a little easier to turn over. So it's very square. Jump back to that TS3. We'll see how those see if your opinion changes at all. But yeah, the last two, I would, uh, I'll fight you for those two. That was awesome. All right, so let me load that one TS2 back up there. TS3, sorry. Yeah, this head just looks like it's got a little more curves to it on the toe. And yeah, that's interesting. Oh, but it's what I'd like to look at in the past. Yeah, that's more kind of fits the aesthetic that you leaned on in the past, at least. Yep. Right? Yep. I think for some, a lot of better players do prefer that that look. Uh, but I've always said that the look of hitting, you know, 80% of your fairways with the flight that you want is really the look that you're after. So some a lot of players, you know, will grow to like the look of a driver if they know it's creating the performance that they want. Yep. Right? Jump back to that TS3 for a few more swings. Stop hitting it right. 
<laughs> a lot of people watching that are saying 306 with a cut. Uh, I would not complain about that, but and again, it's the difference between you know different handicap levels. We all have different uh, different goals. Yeah, right away, I'm already thinking about, you know, if I was going to try to make that TS3 work better for you, Thomas, is, you know, maybe incorporating that sure fit weight, try to see if we get that ball to fall back to the left a little bit, because we are seeing a pretty definite trend there with that head, right? Yeah. Definitely falling to the right, which, again, a lot of the numbers are great, but for a player who maybe prefers to work the ball to the left or just your feedback, um, you know, that's not a flight that you particularly like. How would you compare the sound of the two drivers. I know sometimes indoors that's tough, but um, do you feel like yeah. off the face both drivers are similar or do you have a preference? Well, I know that I hit the middle of the club face a couple of times with the TS2, so yeah. sound on those and feel felt, felt amazing. Yeah. Um, this one here, I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm probably getting the feedback from it going to the right, so maybe thinking, oh, maybe I'm catching on the heel or something. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to work really hard to turn this thing over and it just yeah. doesn't want to do it. Yeah, so. I mean, your smash factor on that last one was 149, so yeah. you couldn't have missed it by too much. Um, you know, so I think that sometimes when you see a ball that's fading to the right, the instant reaction is that, you know, I did something wrong and that yeah. might tarnish the feel of that shot when the mm -hmm. ball flight doesn't, doesn't really correlate to it. Yeah. Uh, let's say one more just for good measure. We'll have six with each that way. Alright. See if I can get this one to go a little bit straighter. Or maybe it's just the club. on that one, you that one so straight. I say that one felt There's good. a better player, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very determined and pretty much got a dead straight ball on that one, which is great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if we feel like we want to come back maybe a little later in the test, we'll maybe throw that, that uh, sure fit CG weight a little more in the heel. Let's we'll see if, you know, how much influence we can really have over that ball falling to the left. Obviously, it had to work pretty hard uh, to straighten that one out. Yeah. So I think that's good for our listeners is that, you know, TS2 definitely, you know, when I'm testing this one in my fittings, both the driver and the fairway wood, they do like to go straight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whereas the TS3, you know, and the D3 models, you know, historically from Titleist, you know, might cater to the player who maybe naturally wants a little more of an anti-left uh, look. Yep. And then certainly with the SureFit CG weight, you can definitely add some faint bias to that head for, for all those uh, hookers out there that, you know, really desperate for trying to eliminate the left-hand side. That, that head might really appeal yeah. to that player quite a lot. End of the day, if I can get it to go straight, I don't really care on the bull fly. Just needs to be in the fairway. Okay, three more at that TS2. Results out of the equation, but do you have a preference on just the way those two heads are, are looking and performing? Um, at more on address, I guess. I, mean, I know the past you've leaned towards the D3. Yeah. After hitting a few, what's your preference there? I'm getting used to the, the look of this uh, of the um, TS2 head a little bit. Yeah. A little bit now. Yeah. Probably because I'm a little biased by seeing the fact that it stayed a little straighter for me. Right. Um, but there's just something about that clean lot, the clean line up here. It just feels like it's helping me line up just a little bit easier. Yeah. Then you can look on tour. There's a much more of a mixed bag uh, for players on tour between the TS2 and TS3. So it's uh, TS2 is, is definitely you know very optimal for players of all handicaps. That's it. 
Okay, well, you were due for an outlier there. Again, really nice and straight though, right? Yeah. You see, caught that one a little off center. Yeah, so. That was... so just for, for good mathematical comparisons, we'll we'll be kind to Thomas here. You know, we're Minnesota nice here in second <laughs> swing, so we'll give a we'll give a free mulligan out to my friend here. But let's take a look at some of those numbers, um, Thomas. And you know, I think you know certainly before we even look at a number, it's just you know head to head. Uh, both in the standard setting. Really interesting to see the dispersion uh, of those two drivers. Obviously, you found almost center of the grid with four out of the five best hits with the TS2, with one you know just turning over a little bit more than you wanted. Yep. Whereas five out of the six with that TS3 in the standard setting for you, definitely were finding more the right edge of that fairway. Mm -hmm. And you know, for you, you kind of prefer, I would assume, the yellow pattern here to the white one based on your reactions there. So. Yep. You know, TS2 in its stock setting definitely giving you uh, the performance uh, characteristics that you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, even that one, that one on the left, that white one, I really worked hard to get that going. Yeah, I think it was your last yeah. hit on the whole test with that one. I mean, you, yeah. you fought tooth and nail to get that one back to the center <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, of, the, of the grid there. You know, if you're looking at some of your numbers, obviously really consistent, a lot of your uh, swing uh, characteristics, your club head speed, your attack angle, your club path, very similar across the board. So really the ball flight numbers is really more the curious thing we look for. TS2, slightly better in ball speed. Some of that might have to do with you squaring that one up. You know, obviously when you're leaking one to the right, yep. with a, just a little open face to path, you can lose a little bit of ball speed there, but you know, both drivers, one, four, nine on the smash factor. So yeah, I'm, again, I don't feel bad for your miss hits whatsoever. <laughs> A uh, good player, a uh, good ball striker, but maybe just a little extra ball speed on that TS2. And, and again, I would equate that to just seeing a few more balls that were turning over versus the ones that were falling a little bit to the right. I yep. think that also is why we were seeing a little less spin with the TS2 2400 versus the TS3 2700. I think that's a surprise for a lot of uh, Titleist driver aficionados is that you, know, you always thought of the D3 uh, or that smaller, deeper faced head as being the low spinner. Yep. You know, in a lot of our testing, we've seen both heads pretty good on the spin. There's really mm -hmm. not a big difference at the same loft. And, you know, it's unusual to see 300 RPMs less on the TS2 than the TS3. But in this case, it has a lot to do with your ball flight. Yep, it you know, was cutting every time with that uh, TS3. So that's exactly. why it's so much higher. Speed. Yeah, and I think that equates to the distance piece too. We know the ball speed was almost identical just a little more spin on those fades. And that's why, you know, that TS2 on average was maybe just a little bit further. We saw a carry distance up around about two or three yards. And yeah. obviously with that lower spinning, we were seeing a projected run out of 310 versus 303 with the TS3. I would be very interested to see how that TS3 performance changes if we move the weight into the heel. Yeah. Uh, so let's hit five or six more with that weight in the heel and see how the numbers and your opinion of those two heads change when we do that. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Cool. We're gonna go back to the TS3, but because we were seeing that ball leaking to the right a little bit, we're gonna see if we can encourage that club face and that center of gravity to encourage that ball to fall a little bit more left. And that, you know, for us is really the biggest fitting and technological difference between the TS3 and TS2 is that sure fit, that weight, uh, which you saw in both 917 models, it's only available in the TS3. Yep. Um, so in this particular fitting, um, I'm going to just say sure fit weight in the heel. Uh, for you, the kind of the, the difficulty of that head uh, to turn over was a detriment or not something that you were looking for. I think for those players online who might be watching this video thinking, oh my gosh, I miss left all the time. There are things you can do with that TS3 to create even more fade bias, you know, with the hosel adjustment and then doing the opposite of what we're doing right now is actually moving that sure fit weight out to the toe. Um, you know, for a player that misses left, this might be a great head for that individual. Yep. Let's see if we can get the numbers to um, be a little bit closer between those two. Um, and let me add one more tag there, that TS3. Okay. Fell straight up. Oh, still on 
to go a little right. Yeah, <laughs> relative to the other five fades, I would say, definitely a little further, definitely a little closer to the line. The M149 smash, I really am starting to get annoyed with your uh, <laughs> consistency there. Both of those hits, though, the ball speed is a little faster, Thomas. Yep. And it's both of those shots, good. yeah, both of those shots did go a little further. So, you know, that is an indicator for me is that, you know, some of the contact uh, with that TS3 is, is coming out of a little bit of the inside of that, that club face. Yep. Um, yeah, that last one did not feel good. To improve it, that a little bit. It fell a little bit off, but yep. still, performance wise, distance wise, can't complain. Yep. three in a row, really sim similar numbers and similar results. So, you know, what we saw there was, you know, probably, you know, for using the track man range as kind of a reference point, yep. you know, probably about a 10 to 15 yard movement from right to left on average. And what that should have done with less fade spin, probably your overall spin should have come down a little bit there. Let's expand that table up. Uh, so we can kind of see that a little bit better. Yeah, so we went from the first test with TS3. Again, we didn't change the loft. All we did was move the weight into the heel, and the spin went from 2,700 RPMs down to 2,300 RPMs. So now those two spin rates between the two heads are much closer together. We also saw the ball speed pick up a little bit. So really in that test, TS2 and TS3, now you have pretty much identical ball speed. Look at that, 11.4 and 11.3 on the launch, and spin rates that are almost exactly the same. So from a carry distance standpoint, you know, 0.4 yards between the two, and then actually just a little bit more run out with the TS3 uh, because of that lower spin. So yep. certainly what that highlights is that, you know, moving that weight in the head definitely can change the performance of not only the ball flight, but things like ball speed, things like launch, and things like spin. Did the driver feel any different uh, when we move that weight as far as the contact, you feel like you're um, catching it more solid. I feel like I was catching it in a pretty, pretty similar location. Um, yeah, I, it felt pretty similar to be honest, but obviously noticeable that I was able to not so much turn it over, but still it just didn't go as far right. So, right, right ball for me, it's a no no. So, that's one thing I've been working on for the last few years. Could also be the fact that obviously November, I haven't played or practiced much at all. Um, so swing could be a little bit off too and not grooved in where I want it to be right now. Um, but even still, it's pretty obvious that putting that weight in the, in the heel has really helped me to limit the amount of ball that's going to the right. Absolutely. So, yeah. No, I think you, I mean, one of the things and the, the data is kind of showing that you, you do an amazing job of controlling the club face through impact. You know, if you look at all three of those uh, sample sizes, this would be your first test with TS3 then the TS2 testing, and then when we change the weight configuration um, with the TS3, you can see that you catch everything just a hair high and towards the toe, which you know you would think you know realistically with gear effect would create a little bit more of a draw. Yep. So what that tells us is that you know with your hit location not changing at all, that that TS3 head, at least in this fitting, definitely wanted to go a little bit more right mm -hmm. with the settings with the loft, with the shaft, with the length, and the golfer remaining constant. So what moving that sure fit weight really does is by changing the center of gravity and moving it a little bit more into the heel, that gear effect is helping to create a ball flight that's not trying to fall to the right quite as much. And yeah. I think based on our interview, that's a ball flight that you would be looking at a little bit closer. Yep. And if you jump back to the, the overall um, pattern of those two clubs, um, now you have a little tougher decision on your hands, theoretically. You know, really would come down to how important is it for you to create a draw when you want, um, and how important is the difference in the look and the feel. And so I think what this highlights, and that's what I've been seeing in a lot of my fittings, is that you know in the past it was really easy to 
say that you're a, you're a D2 player or you're a D3 player. Mm -hmm. And I think now because of the way you can optimize both heads and the fact that they're both really fast and they're both really low spinning, um, you know, players can really entertain both head models in a fitting environment and really choose the head model that they like the best, whether that's at a dress or in this fitting, maybe the one that skewed the ball flight a little bit more towards the uh, flight that's more optimal for what your eyes like to see. We're all queued up. Let's hit three more. And again, we made that subtle adjustment there for you, Thomas, moving that uh, driver from the A1 setting to the A2 setting just a little more upright. All right. seeing there is that definitely changing the lie angle is certainly influencing the direction of the shots. Um, we went to the A2 setting, so you know there is a setting in between, I believe that's the, um, that's the B2 setting that makes a 0.75 adjustment in lie angle versus the one and a half that we did. So you know kind of like the Goldilocks test, you might be perfect right in between in a wider sample size. Yep. But we did start to see that ball turning over to the left Maybe you commented, maybe you pulled it a little bit. So, you know, mm -hmm. I may have installed a little bit of pressure for you to get a golf ball left of that line. <laughs> but I do think that, you know, when you're looking at driver technology um, and all the adjustments that not only the Titleist drivers offer, but almost all your brands offer is, you know, you're not just fitting for loft anymore. You're fitting for the head style, which might influence shot shape. It might influence the look. It might influence launch and spin. Um, you're also fitting for Y angle, right? We just saw how that can influence not only the setup, yep. uh, but also the directionality of the shot. And then certainly when you have movable weights or the ability to change the center of gravity, you can have a dramatic improvement um, or um, influence on whether that ball is falling a little left or a little right, depending upon what that player likes. Yep. Um, changing that Y angle, what did that do uh, address-wise on that driver? Was it noticeable? Did it change the way you felt like you were swinging it at all? Um, did it make it, it better? Was, I, I like the setting. Um, I think the biggest issue was the fact that I had been fighting that fade a little bit. I still try to kind of fight that fade as opposed to just swing and trust that the, the upright setting was going to do its job. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big reason why that last one, for example, I pulled. So yeah. that I think I didn't quite trust my swing per se, as opposed to just trusting the settings what you'd fit me into. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was probably the biggest thing that I noticed. Um, you know, as a, as a fitter, you know, a lot of, after optimizing both heads, really, and you're getting a lot of golf balls that are going out into the same spot. You know, so as a golfer and as a fitter, I would probably put that decision-making process on, on the golfer as to whether the TS2 or the TS3 was a little bit better. By optimizing the settings of the TS3, we, we, we can get the golf ball to do what you want. Yep. The TS2 naturally wanted to go a little bit straighter. We didn't really have to make any major adjustments to the settings. And so for some players, that might be an advantage. They might like the fact that in a neutral setting, I don't have to jack around with this thing. It's set, ready to go. That larger head gives me a little bit of confidence. I know it's gonna fly pretty straight, turn over when I want it to. That might get the check mark. For players that prefer that smaller, more traditional, you call it a pear shape, uh, look to the TS3, knowing that you can utilize the sure fit weight and the lie angle adjustments with the hosel to build the ball flight that you want, you know, you really can make both heads work for pretty much any player. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of come, that's why it's fun to come in and get fit. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, really interesting numbers and 
great feedback from you on kind of the differences as we changed those heads. The Titleist R&D team is doing a nice job there. We're definitely proving that those adjustments make a difference for your golf ball. Thomas, great job. I think what we saw there is that, you know, Titleist has definitely upped its game in the driver category. You know, from a ball speed and spin rate standpoint, both models are going to compete with any of the heads that are out there today. Um, and then as a better player, you, know, you really have a tough decision, right? Uh, it's a fun decision, yep. but we can really make both heads uh, pretty optimal and it just really depends on do you want that optimization to come through adjustability? You know, the TS3 definitely allowed us to really move your golf ball around while you just kind of stay the same versus the TS2 for players who maybe just want to set it down and rip at it and know and be able to trust that it's going to fly pretty straight. That TS2 model with its more modern shaping might appeal to a better player or a high handicapper. Um, and then, you know, TS3 definitely, we saw at least in your fitting, that it likes to maybe fall a little bit more to the right than the TS2, which might appeal to players that are trying to eliminate one side of the golf course. If I had to put you on the spot, which of the two heads, you know, did you feel like would find their way into your bag if given the choice? Probably sneak still towards the TS3. Um, TS2 was, it was a good looking, you know, good looking driver. I like the fact that it was pretty square set up. Um, I like the idea of still being able to adjust stuff around with the TS3, still with the, the weight in the back. Um, it really, they're very, very similar. Though I don't, I don't know if I could really separate the two of them number wise. I, I was, I was pretty impressed with both. Yeah, knowing yeah. your personality, being friends for a while, I mean, you're definitely more the perfectionist, the mechanic. Oh, yeah. you know, having that <laughs> weight and adjustments probably appeals to your senses a little bit more. Yeah. So that makes sense. Uh, but I think you know, as we look at the data, it's tough to make that decision. You could really, you know, you hit a home run with both drivers. So yep. hopefully this uh, analysis helps you guys uh, when picking out a driver or if you guys uh, were curious on how the new Titleist product was performing in the hitting base. If you want to learn more about the Titleist TS product and other clubs here at Second Swing, feel free to stop into one of our store locations or jump onto secondswing.com uh, to learn more about the Titleist product. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day.